Join Carol Davies on Global Voice Radio, the host of Only the Best for You. Be a change maker and unlock the secret to your best life. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast, Only the Best for You, here on Global Voice Radio. My name is Carol Davies of the Passion Motivator Coaching Company. I am so pleased each week to share with you the best information and speakers about how you can be a change maker to make the world and yourself the best you can be. Today I'm reporting to you on a topic that has long intrigued me. How do we achieve balance in our lives? Balance is a feeling derived from being whole and complete. It's a sense of harmony. It is essential to maintaining quality in life and work. Your life is made up of many vital areas, including your health, family, financial, intellectual, social work, spiritual, recreation, personal growth, romance, and more. Every aspect of your life. Now, here is an interesting quote I found from Thomas Merton. He said that happiness is not a matter of intensity, but of balance, order, rhythm, and harmony. Many people desire to live a balanced life. I certainly do, as I know that the more balanced I feel, the more grounded and free I feel, and the more I feel capable of accomplishing in my life. In my work as a success coach, I am often reminded that what works for some people does not necessarily work for others, and that one's, one person's idea of balance may not constitute anything remotely balanced from another person's point of view. So I wanted to address the various elements of life that can require balancing and offer some suggestions where to find the mix that works best for you. Gabe, what does it mean to be balanced? To me, it means that you have a handle on the various elements in your life and don't feel that your heart or mind are being pulled too hard in any direction. Mostly you feel calm, grounded, clear-headed, and motivated. So how do you find your balance? The elements in life that require the most balancing can be divided into two categories, internal and external. Oftentimes, people focus on one more than the other. For example, you may find that you focus on external things like work, relationships, and activities, and that you pay very little attention to what is going on inside your heart and mind. On the other hand, you may find that you spend so much time being self-reflective that you sometimes miss out on the experience of living. Other people may be fairly balanced between the two, but might want to balance out some specific elements within each category. So I researched uh, this little outline to help us better understand the beneficial components on both ends of each spectrum. On the internal side, which covers mind, heart, and health, for the mind, this means challenging yourself intellectually versus creating opportunities for your mind to rest. For the heart, it means giving love versus receiving love. For health, it means eating, drinking, and exercising properly versus resting and treating yourself to some extra things that you really know you shouldn't have. Now, on the external side, this covers work, social, family, and fun. Work, this is where you are pushing yourself to achieve goals, 
versus seeing the bigger picture and enjoying the ride. On the social side, it's satisfying your social desires versus taking time for yourself. Your family, it could be fulfilling your family responsibilities versus creating healthy boundaries. For fun, it could be allocating time for things that you enjoy doing versus making sure you don't overdo it. As you can see, both ends of each spectrum are actually positive, but if either side is taken to an extreme, something that is intended to be positive can end up being detrimental. It's helpful to check in with yourself to see if you feel balanced. If you feel pulled in any one direction and uneasy about it, these steps may help you feel aligned. One, acknowledge. Take some time to really look at your life, your state of mind and how you're feeling. Be honest with yourself and notice the areas of your life that you're neglecting. Two, examine. Notice if you're leaning more toward an internal or external focus, or if there are areas within each category that you would like to be more balanced. Three, set goals. Make a list and decide which ones are most important to you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later on. Four, plan tasks. Make a list of daily, weekly, and monthly tasks that you will need to do to achieve each of these goals you have set. What have you tried in the past? Did it work? If not, what can you do differently? Five, reflect. What is the most important thing you've accomplished in the past? How did you stay focused towards this goal? How did you handle your fears, doubts, anxieties, worries, and negative self-talk? How does it feel to know that you accomplished the goal in spite of these parts of yourself? Six, prepare. What is your inner stuff that will try to keep you from sticking to your plan? such as fears, worries, doubts, negative self-talk? Can you specify the things you will say to yourself to push you off track? For example, just one more bite, I'll start eating better tomorrow. Make a list of things like this. Seven, empower. What do you need to remember in those times? What are the things that you can say to that self-sabotaging part of yourself? Be kind to yourself. Balance won't feel good if you're cruel to yourself in creating it. And we're often more cruel to ourselves than any other person on earth. Eight, connect. Is there a person or a tactic that you can use to keep yourself supported, motivated, and focused in those hard times? I highly recommend connecting and sharing your inner process someone. Find someone who can help you challenge your inner demons and celebrate your own accomplishments. This could be a trusted mentor, a coach, a spiritual advisor. Choose someone that you feel comfortable with. Nine, plan. Just like accomplishing any goal in life, it takes time and effort to overcome your habitual patterns and create new ones. If you stay on track with this detailed and intentional process for three whole months, then there is a good chance you will create new habits to enjoy a more balanced life going forward. This may sound simple, but it is very powerful. We can choose an activity that we are hyper-focused on, which will actually enhance multiple areas of life balance. It requires us to be fully in the moment. A walk to the car from the grocery store <coughs> can be spiritually enlightening if we take the time to notice the rainbow everyone else is too busy to see. 
The trip up one floor to a colleague's office can be a moment to increase our help if we focus and take the stairs. The key is being intentional with our activities and keeping them always focused on our life's purpose. Now, I also came across uh, several secrets that successful people do to live a balanced life. Highly successful people measure themselves on seven key elements, health, family, social, financial, business, civic, and spiritual. They try to maintain a balance between these elements to live a healthy and fulfilling life. I'd like to take an example of well-known CEOs. What are the secrets they use to live a balanced life? They measure themselves on seven key elements where they give themselves a score from one way out of balance to 10, practically Zen-like harmony to see where they stand. I'm not sure I've yet met anyone who has scored a 10 in all seven elements. So a more reasonable goal might be to find balance with at least half of these parts of your life. One, physical health. Whether you are a CEO or just a go-getter at work, it's easy to let things like exercise and diet go by the wayside once things get busy in the office. But that's the only body you're ever going to get. And it needs to carry you until the end of the game. That's why it's critical to continue to keep your body strong and healthy enough to enable you to do the things that excite you, whether that's traveling for business or visiting your grandchildren. The key here is to be fit enough that you don't have to say no to anything you want to do. Give yourself a score. Be honest and see what you think. Could you do more to improve that number as a way to begin leading the kind of balanced life you're seeking? Remember, score yourself between zero and 10. Zero being very, very low and 10 being all out of the ballpark. Then there's the area of family. How balanced do you feel with your family time? What's your relationship like with your spouse? With your children? How about your parents and extended family members? Family ties are the tightest relationships you should have in your life, no matter how busy things get at work. If you give yourself a low score here, it's worth hitting the pause button to make the investment in repairing these relationships. Family members are truly part of your support network and you'll never miss them more than when you're at your lowest point. Now how about the social aspect? Do you have a robust network of friends or not? Do you have a group of folks like you like to hang out with regularly? Maybe for a book club? Uh, to go and play soccer or attend movies? If not, it's time to start building these kinds of relationships. Having people around you that you like and trust is one of the best indicators of living a long life. If you are sacrificing relationships like these because you're working too hard, you're clearly not in balance. Now, what about on the financial side, what does your personal financial balance sheet look like? Are you on the path to accumulate enough wealth that you will be able to enjoy a comfortable retirement? Are your assets increasing over time or have you neglected to make the time to tend your financial garden? The key to personal financial health is to feel in control and know that you have enough money to have options. If you're working too much and you don't have the money you need, something is clearly missing in the equation. How about on the business side? Whether you are running your own business 
or climbing the corporate ladder. Ask yourself how energized you are to go into work every day. Are you excited to be making a difference or making progress? Or do you dread the monotony of your day-to-day -day drag? Or if you own the business, how are things going? Are revenues and profits growing? Some of us who are high achievers might never give ourselves a 10 here, no matter what. But it's worth measuring how all that time you're investing in your work is paying off. Now, how about on the civic side? How much time are you able to devote to the things you care about in your community? That could mean anything from volunteering to serving on the PTA or coaching a sports team. Anything that makes you feel excited when you give of yourself. Think of it as your attitude of gratitude. If you haven't made enough time to give back, you're missing out on a real emotional payback because you are rewarded by the act of giving. And the key here isn't just signing checks. Time and talent are the real gifts. I speak from experience here because my mother and father were excellent role models in the area of volunteering. They volunteered in the school, they volunteered in their church, and also in the community. And from them, I learned that is so central and volunteering and giving back is key in my life. So I definitely could recommend this as an avenue if you feel things are lacking in your life. And how about on the spiritual side? The final aspect of living a balanced life is your spiritual side. This could be anything from taking a walk in the woods to making a trip to church on Sunday. Whatever fills up your spiritual cup. This is how we renew ourselves when we're down. And it's something that can be easily neglected. If you score he low here, remember that scale between zero and 10, make the time to rethink your connection to God, to nature, or whatever spiritual connection you feel. If you connect and feel as though you are having some sort of guidance, you will feel refreshed and ready to tackle the world. Finding balance among these seven elements isn't always easy. But I'll share a cautionary tale of what can happen if you find yourself out of balance for too long. Early in my career, I worked for a boss who was a superb achiever in business. But everyone, including his family and employees, did not like him. He may have been a success in the elements of business, but he had very few, if no, friends. His children wanted nothing to do with him. He was on multiple wives, and he was really what I would call spiritually bankrupt. Some people might look at his track record and call him a success. I would disagree. I used to feel profound compassion for him, because how can anyone be a great leader when they can't even balance their own life? When someone lives such an unbalanced life, no one wins. So, it's very important to look at the different areas in your life and see what is in balance, what is not in balance. As a coach, when I work with clients, I have what I call um, a work-life balance wheel that I have clients look at and fill out. And we find very often that people and it's like the seven elements that I talked about. You rate yourself. Um, is Are you feeling, you know, like it is working well for you or not? And you put numbers and then you sort of draw out what it looks like. And it should form a perfect wheel, but most people get a very lopsided looking contraption. And that's usually a very revealing thing that I start with in the coaching process to help people find out if they're in balance or not. And it points out the areas where they feel they need 
work. So if you're interested, why don't you get in touch with me um, for just a short consultation or to discuss a few issues that concern you? Because I'd really like to hear from you. If possible, you can contact me through my website, www.thepassionmotivator.com or by email at coachcaroldavies.com. I'd really love to hear from you. And remember, you can change your life at any time and become the success you want to be. So I look forward to connecting with you again next week. Bye now. Welcome to Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly with host Nancy Becker on Global Voice Radio. Nancy and her guests will share tips and recommendations.